Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from sysadmin102 In today's video, I will show you how to set up uh, OpenVPN Remote Access uh, with SSL and TSL encryption and user authentication So basically you will need certificate and user authentication to uh, access the VPN server remotely so one other thing uh, that you will need that you will need the dynamic DNS or the DNS setup uh, for your options. Uh, so that way, when you uh, away from home, it will able to pick up that uh, subdomain and point it to your public IP address. So that's why it's able to access your um, Open VPN server remotely. And if you already have a DNS, let's get started. We're gonna go to. Uh, Ops in and when you log in you should be at lobby by default and we would go to system and trust and authorities so first you need to create a certificate authority so this gonna uh, issuing the certificate for the server and as well as the client if you already have one you can use uh, the current one as well and I'm gonna call it sysadmin102 SSL CA for certificate authority. And obviously we're gonna create an internal certificate authority. Keylane, uh, we're gonna use uh, 4096 and HHA512. This is gonna be uh, for this whole tutorial. This is the Keylane and the algorithm we're gonna use. 4096 and HHA512. Uh, Lifetime, 365-day that one year. So I put another zero, that 10 year. And uh, country, select your home country in there. So mine is gonna be US. And the state gonna be California. City, San Jose. Organization is gonna be sysadmin 102 LLC. Email address text support at sysadmin102.com. All right, and you can keep a default common name for internal CA, or you can name it the same as the descriptive name. Uh, whatever work for you, as long as you can, can uh, dif differentiate uh, which one is which. All right, and with that, let's go to the certificate. We're gonna read a server certificate, so add, and we're gonna read an internal certificate. I'm gonna call it sysadmin102. Let's do our cap. LLC remote VPN. Okay. And I only have one certificate authority, so by default, it automatically pick that one. Uh, and then this one gonna be a uh, server certificate. Actually, yeah, let's change that to uh, server certificate. All right. And uh, the key lane is gonna be four zero nine six. Uh, the HS algorithm gonna be HHA five twelve. Again, lifetime I'm gonna give it ten years. Prefix six five zero. Everything else should be default. Uh, common name, copy. Make sure it's the same. Or you can name it something else. All right. And lastly, we're gonna create a user certificate. You have to access system access and then user. Uh, if you haven't had one, you can create a new user. If you already have one, you can just hit edit to uh, get the certificate issue. So I'm gonna name it sysadmin102, sysadmin102, oh actually, <laughs> password. Email address again, text support at sitadmin102.com. 
and everything else should be default member of uh, I'm gonna add it to admin group you can add it to whatever group you like depend on your setup and you're gonna select there to uh, create a user certificate if you already have a, a user you uh, will select edit and same thing come in here and click the create certificate and we select set okay so it's gonna be creating an internal certificate uh, keep everything at default except for uh, the key lane we're gonna select uh, 4096 make sure that everything is uniform and at the age it's uh, 512 so your CA your server and your client should have the same and like time you can give it uh, 365 or 10 year whatever you have you and we keep everything as default and there we go we should have a certificate now for your uh, for our user perfect and lastly when I go to uh, VPN and open VPN and servers we're gonna create a new server so that's two ways to do it you can click on the act and you will have to manually uh, input everything using the wizard the benefit is it's gonna walk you through, uh, kind of guide you through the process, and as well it automatically generate a file uh, one rule for you. So it's just a basic rule that will get you up and running. All right. And type of server, there's gonna be a local user asset access by default. Uh, however, if you you adapt a radio, you will have to change it to uh, whatever applicable to you. And next. And since I only have one certificate authority, it automatically select that one. If you have multiple, make sure you select the correct one. And next again, uh, server certificate. We're gonna select the server certificate we created earlier. And next, uh, interface gonna be uh, WAN, W-A-N. Uh, protocol, just leave a default UDP. Uh, local port is gonna be 1194, that's the default for OpenVPN. And description that's gonna be uh, sys admin 102 remote VPN. Okay, and lead dash at default encryptions. We're gonna do uh, 256 GCM and the uh, error readem. We're gonna select again 512 512. IPv4 uh, tunnel network. This is your remote IPv4 network. Uh, it's good that you select like uh, the uncommon one. Uh, do not use the common one because you might have an IP conflict with whatever network that you are connected to. Uh, so pick the one that uncommon, not like the one that you know uh, it come with like default on your router. Cause a lot a lot of time like. People don't just change the IP address, they use the default setting. That's zero slash 24. And you, uh, you have an option to uh, UVP uh, IPv6, but that option now, so I'm gonna use this with FC00 column, and then that's gonna be a slash 64. All right. And IPv4 local, this is your local IPv4. So my attend dot thirteen dot two dot zero and subnet with twenty four. IPv6 uh, local network. Uh, this one I have to look it up later on. But again, IPv6 is optional, and everything else you can keep as a default. Comparison you can keep as a default as well. But I'm gonna use the LZ4 version two and inter-client communications you can allow communication between clients that connect to the server uh, option is there uh, it's your choice i'm gonna keep it uh, checked all right dns default domain so it's gonna be my local default domain so when the client connected to the vpn server the vpn server will push the default domain to the client DNS server, the first one gonna be my local DNS server. So that way, um, when a remote client connected to my VPN servers, 
uh, it will able to um, you know translate the um, look it up look it up the local host so I able to access uh, let's say my uh, next cloud locally is uh, using the fully qualified domain name instead of using the IP address and uh, only good idea to have a fallback uh, DNS server uh, so for fallback DNS server I'll be using the quad 9 so that 9.9.9.9 .9 .9 .9 and the alternate one it would be 149.112.112.111 all right, and the DNS server number four, we're going to use loud Claire, which is 1.1.1.1. All right, NTP server is optional, it's up to you. You want to use it, uh, you can uh, Google uh, NTP servers, uh, you can use like nist.gov, and they give you uh, the IP address to put in there so you uh, can send the TAM to the client that connected to your system, and everything else should be default. Next. And here is uh, what makes it easier to using the wizard compared to like uh, manually add it in. Because here I have an option for you to uh, generate the uh, firewall rule configurations. So that way you can get it up running. And next. And finish. Alright, let me just show you if you go to a firewall and you go to rules and you go to uh, Wang. And there you go, it automatically re-aid the uh, rule for you. This is automatically generated. And this is uh, incoming traffic, IPv4 or V6 UDP. It, uh, the destination is one address. And they are going to go to uh, the 1194, which is OpenVPN. And you go to OpenVPN, it is it's generate another one for IPv4 and V6 uh, from any to any. So there we go. Let's see, it actually re-A1 for lane. Uh, look like it not, but there we go. Okay, so now we're going back to uh, OpenVPN. And now we have a server already. Next step is to export the client. Uh, oh, no, I mean, yeah, there we go. So client export. So for the client export, the host name is going to be uh, your DDNS. You have two uh, or three options for four option archive file only file only by default uh, that the uh, VPN configuration file uh, the ring uh, bell uh, and uh, viscosity uh, those are the same thing as VPN configuration but that uh, uh, specifically make for the rainbow or the viscosity uh, VPN client and we can only at the default setting and you would uh, select the user that you want to uh, export their uh, VPN configurations. And if you're on uh, Mac OS, you can uh, airdrop the certificate to your uh, iPhone for your mobile device. Uh, if not, uh, you can email it and then you should be able to open the attachment from the email uh, on your iPhone. So on your iPhone, make sure that you uh, download the OpenVPN apps and then after that you can airdrop or email your certificate or Google Cloud, what have you. Alright, I'm going to airdrop it over to mine. And then you're going to select uh, open, open with OpenVPN. Interesting. I'm going to airdrop it again. All right. Accept. Open with open VPN. And there we go. All right, I'm going to delete one of it. So I'm going to select uh, app. And then you're going to put in your username. And next time you don't want to enter the password, you would save the password. All right, and we're going to select connect and then select allow. And I ask you to put in your pin. 
and there we go it connected to your uh, VPN server and while we add it let's do uh, the speed test all right and open up a speed test and this is on uh, Google Fi 5G let's see how fast it is And uh, Google Fi 5G actually pretty fast. Uh, it's using a T-Mobile network by default, but it doesn't have the limitation and throttle uh, like T-Mobile. Like fast internet worldwide, uh, anywhere you go, uh, as long as you put in the uh, country supported by Google, I think a 200 plus country, uh, you will get the fast internet and free uh, tech messages. Um, so that's a good thing. It's like a pocket Wi-Fi that you can enable hotspot and by the way the hotspot is full speed it's not limited to like you know 512 or 256 like the other carrier and uh, if you would like to switch to uh, Google Fi uh, I have the uh, referral code on my uh, channel in the tutorial if you using that referral code uh, you will get $20 uh, Fi credit and I will get that $20 as well and that concluded uh, today's tutorial. If you think the tutorial is helpful, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye bye.